Hello, my friends. It is me, Karen Valentine, and we are back for part two of this um, really cool um, rabbit hair, whatever you want to call him. Um, I just absolutely loved all the cool texture in his fur, so I thought he would be fun to do. Um, we did the background on the last video, part one, and changed it up a little bit. I wanted, um, I, I, I actually used a different photo um, for the inspiration um, of, of, the, of this background. So um, there's still, I'm still going to work on the background a little bit more, adding some more grasses and stuff, but I wanted to get the rabbit done first. So the important part is that the area um, uh, around the the uh, rabbit is is kind of done um, as far as you know that goes, I guess, and um, it'll be easier to um, lay the hair um, of the hair <laughs> on top of the background. So I'm going to. Um, start on the eye. That's kind of where I always tend to start. It just works for me that way. Um, I have the camera set up in a way that hopefully um, you will be able to see what I'm doing and I will be able to see what I'm doing because my um, my board is up on an angle. It is not um, it is not flat on the table. So. The camera is kind of right, <laughs> it's kind of right at my forehead level in front of me, but I think, um, I think it'll be okay. So, um, there you go. So I'm just going to go ahead and start and try and do this, try and do this eye. So before we even get going too far, I would like to get some white in here because... I want to make sure that I keep that white area as clean as I can, at least for the time being. That white even comes, we'll add on top of it, but if we get some of that on here.
have a whole jar of these um, paper stumps and uh, you can clean them by rubbing them on sandpaper. And they're really nice for blending. Let me get to that center bit in a second. I want to do some of this out here. I am not sure how to handle this. Um, that's got some blue in it, but the blue would be from the sky. And we don't really have blue in our sky, so. Um, I don't know how to do this. Okay, so I'm gonna add some black in here. And darker in here. Never done an eye like this before, so. I'm not quite sure. I don't like what it's, what it, I don't like how it's turning out so far, so I'm not. Part of me wants to just forget this part right here and just do a little highlight bit, because I just don't know. don't know how to how to handle it and make it look glossy 
Um, you know, we want that glossy look, and I don't... I'm not sure that I can do that. Just gonna keep going and keep working it and eventually it will turn out. <laughs> too big. It's too much. All right. Still not dark enough, I think. Part of the problem. And the other part of the problem is this camera right in front of my face. if I can push it in a little bit closer. I know it gets pretty zoomed in, but I don't think that that's a bad thing. All right, we have to go darker, but at least I can get a little bit closer to my piece this way. sand my um, pastel pencils. I use a knife and um, if after I use them for a while then they dull down then I use a piece of sandpaper I just sand it to more of a point. So this is sepia. It's darker, which might get me closer to the color that I want without using black. I'm still not crazy about what's going on there. Um, and for some reason, everything feels like uh, it's, it's messier than it normally is. And I don't know what I'm doing that's causing that, other than maybe I'm not as I'm not on as much of an angle as I usually work. I'm not sure. Okay, so I've got the dark. I've got the black line. I still feel like it's not quite where I want it to be, though. But it may be that I just need to keep working. Um, I might still add a teeny little bit of blue 
in there and see what that does. This is um, cobalt blue. Just a little bit. And I'm thinking that a teensy little bit of like a gray on top of the white here. Just it's interesting how just some subtle things can um, can really make a difference in the realism. Kind of thinking that those are cloud reflections, but I'm not sure. Okay, I'm gonna leave that. That's not that's not terrible. So I think I'm gonna start down here and work over. At least to start with. So I want for this. The problem with, um, well, it's not really a problem, but filming this for me, being inexperienced in filming when I work on pastels, is a, feels a little bit um, more difficult. And I don't know necessarily why that is, but it is. Um, not the filming part, but just the kind of the organization part. So here's my um, divider, my proportional divider. So I'm going from the corner of the eye where the black ends. Let's see, let's make sure I do this right. Okay, so what color do I want? <laughs> It's not just all super easy, like, it doesn't just magically happen. It definitely takes, so this is just for me to kind of get my shape back in. so weird right now. Um, actually, you're, that's probably the edge of the... And then... Um, when you, um, when I'm sitting here and I'm not talking, it's because, it's because I'm, I'm studying colors and trying to decide what I, what I want to do. Um, so I'm thinking that I'm going to put a brown pan pastel under coat there. Um, the pan pastels are really nice to use as underpaintings. Um, one, they save time, and two, they um, save pencil. They save your pencils because they, um, a teeny little bit of pan pastel goes a long way, and so you're not, um, you know, 
using up your pencil when you do this. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this. What color is this? I don't even know. Burnt Sienna Extra Dark. Start here. Now I could be using the Pan Pastel sponges, uh, but I save those where I can because um, they're not super cheap. And I use these where I can because they are super cheap. But what I'm doing right now is I'm adding a base layer So this is kind of the undercolor, the color that's under all of the lighter fur, so that when we add the lighter fur, it sticks out. wish that my um, other pencils were here because there's some really nice um, skin colors, uh, fur colors coming. So I might try this. This is, so I ordered my pencils through Dick Glick. And unfortunately, <laughs> um, when they arrived, now please don't let this turn you off to shopping from Dick Blick because actually the customer service um, was excellent. But my pencils came because I ordered like, I don't know, 20 open stock pastel pencils. My pencils came in a plastic bag, just loose in a plastic bag, in a very um, flimsy, lightly bubble wrapped um, envelope. <laughs> And all the tips, well, I shouldn't say all the tips, most of the tips of the pencils were all broken off. Um, and when I went to try, and, and that all right, that ticked me off from the start. And then when I grabbed one to start sharpening it, it kept breaking and breaking and breaking and breaking and breaking <laughs> till I got down halfway and said, F this, <laughs> I'm, and I called customer service. Um, and they apologized profusely and said that, you know, we're so sorry, but, um, you know, our, the people who work in their warehouse are not artists and they don't always know what they should be doing. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm going to take a second to sharpen this pencil and I'm wondering if I can do it here in front of you without um, making a fool of myself and breaking it all to heck. Let's see. I don't know if I can because I can't push this back any further really. Um, let's see. There we go. Okay, so I sharpened my pencils with a knife. This is a little bit awkward, but you get the idea and hopefully I don't break it. Um, anyway, I told them like I did not want to keep that order of pencils because I suspected that the way that they were shipped and um, the way that that one had broken, I, I, I was not um, hopeful that the rest of them would be in good shape either. Um, so I sent them back and they're sending me a whole new order with a special, um, instructions of how to package them. So that's how I sharpen my pastel pencils. Um, it is not the most ideal way for me. It is not the way that I, um, would desire to do them. <laughs> um, 
but it is the way that I have to do them because I tried um, doing a sharpener. I tried using a pencil sharpener and um, it, it dulled the blade on the pencil sharpener so quickly. And, and it was just a little, you know, a little um, sharpener like this, like one of these. It's just a little one of these with a with a blade. And there this is the good one. This is the M and R with the good blade. And I bought replacement blades and I tried sharpening um the pastels. And um I I probably had to go through a blade a day. And that's that's just ridiculous. So I finally broke down and started sharpening them the way a lot of other pastel pencil artists sharpen them. I've heard of some people being able to um, use sharpeners, and I am not one of them, unfortunately. So um, this way kind of works the best for me. So, so be it. You get spoiled with colored pencils, being able to just reach over and throw it in the electric sharpener, but um, pastel pencils just are so hard on blades that they, um, I, they just don't, it doesn't work very well for me that way. So I need this to almost be a little bit yellower. <sighs> And of course, this one's not sharp. Oh. Oh, I'll just keep trying with this one and see. Yeah, it's not feeling. Not, I'm not feeling it. Um, let's get. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not, uh, this is not, I'm not happy with this. Let's try this one. This is the Karen Dash, the one that broke all to hell. I didn't have to send this one back. Um, okay, I'm not, I'm not feeling it. And I'm wondering if it's because the contrast is just not, um, it's not enough there. I don't know though, it should still stand out. Maybe I use white. Maybe we'll put some white here just to see what that does. Okay. And then the other thought is I need to switch to Carbatello instead of the pit. really not. It's just color. It's not really texture. Until we start to get up in here. This is not making me happy. It needs to be yellower. So, let's try gold gold ochre light uh, I think that might be better I think it's just right now there's not enough of the piece done to where I feel happy and typically I think I usually start like in the eye and work my way out and it keeps getting better and better and so right now I'm just feeling like what is 
what is this? <laughs> it's not me. I don't like the way it looks at all. It's temporary. So it helps if you turn your um, pencil as you go. That kind of helps to keep a sharper um, edge on the pencil. Um, it's kind of all centers around. that a little bit. So if you blend, when you blend it in on your first go round, and then you do it again, um, it gives more depth. And I'm not even sure that I'm totally happy with what's happening yet, but we can always, you know, come back in and do some more. Do some more. Okay, let's, I want to get at least kind of a section done so I can see how I feel about things. So... This needs to be gray, but this needs to be brown. And I think in the interest of time, <laughs> sort of, I'm just going to lay down pencil. So this is all going to get blended. under layer. And actually, there's even some darker. Uh, this is my gray. I think I need to sharpen this. I'm gonna um, sharpen it, and I will. Um, I will be right back. Okay. So we're gonna put some yellow in here a little bit. Sharpening is very time consuming. <laughs> you know, I don't think about it as much when I'm not on camera because I just do it and just keep going and I'm listening to my book and I don't think about it. But when, um, when I'm on camera, I realize just how much time I spend sharpening. I don't want to add some dark in here. Uh, 
Um, I almost feel like I got a weird bump in there that doesn't belong. I kind of feel, yeah, I kind of feel that way. Um, like I went too high up right there. Can I blend that out? Now there kind of is that yellow glow around him. We'll see. Maybe it'll. Wonder if I. Oh, I'm gonna let it be. So we need some gray, and I think warm gray. So this is warm gray three. I'll put some of that in here. That's why this is why pan pastels often work better for underlayers because they um, they just blend out better on the first coat, you know, on the first. So I should maybe add some more because that doesn't seem like it was enough. So I'm going to use warm gray one. It's interesting. Um, I don't use this yellow paper very often. I usually use um, a darker pastel matte paper. Um, but I thought, oh, let's see what happens, you know, with the the darker, or with the lighter paper. And I'm noticing that my lights don't show up quite as well over the darks as they do when I use the darker paper. So I'm going to put some darks in here. I kind of thought that all the, uh, you know, the pastel matte papers would work, you know, sort of similarly. But I keep finding that they don't. <laughs> all right. Um, I thought I was going to use the warm gray, but I. I don't feel like it shows up enough, so I think I'm going to use this ivory instead. But there's something that looks yellowier, maybe once I get this in. This 
in here around the eye. some undercoat there. I didn't think we really needed it here. We'll use the yellow. Okay. I'm going to bring in something a little bit even more yellow, this light golden. And then if we go white on top, it might me what I want. Not white, but ivory. A lot of times with the pastel pencils, you can blend your colors just right on the pastel mat. All right, this needs some real work. I'm kind of just pressing it in and it is blending it out a little bit and that's okay. Um, I still think it needs a little bit more yellow. some dark up there. I think I'll use this is warm gray five. I thought that was I have so many pencils in my lap. I thought I pulled up one called Beaster. Oh I did. It's right here in my hand. <laughs> I actually kind of like the warm gray five too though so let's just see. All right, so I need to get some, let's get some gray down. I want to come down here and work a little bit down here. So, again, I'm going to be lazy. 
and just use the pencils. Sometimes I really want to use the pan pastels, but sometimes this just feels so much easier. I'm going to just add a few dark bits in here because it just doesn't look, it doesn't look right yet. This is not a fast process, I can tell you that. Um, and it's funny because a lot of people say pastel work is so much faster than colored pencil. And I, um, I kind of have to beg to differ. I think they both take a lot of time. some bright like sometimes when you're working you don't see stuff and then I and then I look away and I look back over at the reference photo and it just pops out to me as like oh I need that it just shows up like put it right here it needs it That's why um, they say to, if you're struggling or whatever and you're not feeling, you're not feeling it, walk away. That's hard for me because I get this, um, I have this like, I have to fix it syndrome. Like I can't let it go and not, I can't walk away when I'm not happy with it. Um, but really, in truth, that's exactly what I have to do because... Sometimes you have to step away from a piece to come back and see it more clearly the way it really is. Because you get so close to a piece and you can't see what you need to see. Okay, I want some... Let's see, I want, I want to blend this. Like 
sometimes you want to blend out those those um, fur strokes because it doesn't start looking fluffy until you do. And then you can come in if you want and add some random sticking out hairs. But um, when you can see every single um, stroke of hair, it, um, it doesn't look soft and fluffy. Something about this that's bugging me too. It's just not. It's a little bit better. I'm going to keep going with black. Warm gray one. I might want to sh just run that on the sandpaper a little bit. Redder brown, like raw umber. What is that? Thirty four. I have that out already. I think I have it out already. Yes, it's right here. Okay, let's get a little bit of that. No, this is like, I, I, feel, I feel like watching this would be like watching paint dry. Well, if you're bored out of your minds, you can always turn on the uh, double time or I think double. I think that's as fast as it goes. Normally, I would put a dark color down and let the light color show on top, 
But for some reason, I feel like that's not happening with this pastel mat. I'm afraid to put down a dark color. Because then I don't know if I'll be able to get a light color on top. I'm probably just being... I'm probably wrong. <laughs> um... a little bit better, that color. That feels... That feels much better. Maybe even something more... orangey. Like... burnt ochre. a little bit, kind of glazing it, just kind of adding the color all over the whole thing. Oh, well see, now it's starting to get better. I'm starting to feel like if I keep working it, we'll get there. <laughs> this light enough. Okay. I watched watching all kinds of things that I would never have time to watch or even take the time to watch when I have my grandson. And he's too young, really, to, you know, to care. In truth, he's only like five months old. Um, so he doesn't care what's on the TV as long as it's... Well, he does like um, Elmo. <laughs> he does like Elmo. But I think as long as it's, you know pretty colors and that sort of thing. I think he'll, I think he's happy, but for, but for me, I can't handle watching Elmo and Sesame Street for 12 hours a day. So we've been, I've been watching um, Disney and there's some stuff on there that I haven't seen in so long. It reminds me of my childhood. Where was I going with that? I don't know. Okay. I know I want, part of me wants to move on, but part of me wants to kind of get this bit the way I want it first. It's not quite there yet. There's kind of a defined line right there that I'm not doing. I want to get that in there so the, the skinniest part is there and then it all right I can kind of see it so it's kind of What I'm not getting is that bright. That's what I'm finding is on this um, yellow pastel mat. It seems so much harder to get the brights, even though it's textured. And you, would, I, in my head, I'm thinking 
that it wouldn't make any difference, especially if I'm going over a darker color. But it seems to make a difference. That doesn't, that, that doesn't feel too bad. I'm kind of starting to feel like that might be okay. We might leave that and keep, and keep on going. Let's work down here a little bit with this gray. funny because this is called warm gray but it kind of looks cool to me it doesn't look warm all right I'm gonna get some black in here this will be the real test if the white pencil goes over this black it really should. And let's measure. See, something's off. Maybe I covered up too much in the... Um... So let's just double check, like, from the eye. Straight down. Okay, that's good. So then from the point of the eye to the bottom of the lip part, just make sure, <laughs> yeah, we did. We covered up quite a lot, so that's okay. Um, I just want to make sure that I fix it. That's why proportional divider is so nice. I couldn't, um, I couldn't work without it. And um, yeah, I couldn't work without it. I'm very, very grateful to have been told about it because I'm not sure that I would have known about it otherwise. Okay, so we're going to rub that all in. And we're going to, I kind of, I'm liking it. I like, I like the way it looks so far. It's, it's pretty good. Let's go ahead and put our Blend that out a little bit. Well, you know, I could probably do this all the way up here. Boy, this is going to be another long series, I think. But these definitely do not go as quickly as coloring pages for me definitely take longer okay. I'm actually 
actually thinking I'm going to bring this so I do tend to work in sections as opposed to um, you know covering a whole area um, and then going in and adding the detail at the end I don't like working that way I like I like watching the piece kind of grow and um, get better as as it as I work. So that's that's how I like to work. But I know a lot of artists will come in and they'll do the whole underpainting first. I don't like doing that. I like, but there's no right way. There's no wrong way. It's only your way. <laughs> your way is the right way. Okay, let's go white. I might not have done enough dark. I'm looking and there's a lot more dark to be seen. Now we can always come in and fill it in like I'm doing here. Um, where you kind of put that dark in between the whiskers, not the whiskers, you know, the hair. <laughs> um, sometimes that works. Okay. So when you do your hair, when you do hair, hair doesn't always lay in the same direction. So I'm gonna, bl I'm, I blended that out. So now that becomes the lower layers of hair. It recesses down into the bottom. I'm gonna add a little bit more dark in here. So your, la your last layer, you're gonna Put hair on and blend and put hair on and blend and then your last layer is going to be almost like the highlights the very top hairs that show um, and those you don't necessarily want to blend away you just want to uh, kind of smush them in and when you do your hair make sure that it's going in the direction that the hair is growing, but also make sure that they're not all like good little soldiers lined up exactly in a row because hair doesn't grow that way. Add some more of this reddish. I'm not pushing down too hard. I'm just kind of blending it around a little bit. We'll add some um, some dark bits. It actually looks like it could use a lot of dark in here, probably more closer to black. There's a lot of colors all in that fur. So I want to try and put those all in with 
in all the under layers. I think this is definitely something that you have to have a, um, a definite love for or um, like detail and have a kind of a passion for it because it's def it definitely does take patience. I just want to see what this does. Karen Dash um, pastels are some of the softest pastels pencils, so they show up um, quite readily. Might be better to save that for the end. Um, I still feel like I keep, maybe I should sharpen this. Oh, you know what? Maybe I should use some of that, some of this. Hey, there we go. That's, that's better. Okay. Um, I think I want to switch to trying. Oh, this might be too, that's going to be too blue. Never mind. Never mind. I'll stick with these warm, these warm grays. Um, the cool grays are too, definitely too blue. But I don't know if you can see or not. When, <clears throat> when you throw down in your under layers all of those other colors, we've got, um, you know, we've got these orangey tones, we've got these reddish brown tones, we've got some dark umber tones, and they've all gone in there um, and gotten blend and, and kind of smoothed out and blended away in between each um, layer. Not completely blended out, but just softened. Um, what winds up happening is that now that fur, now that fur starts to look real and it starts to look three-dimensional with, with depth. I think this is going to be a really cool piece when it's done, but it is going to take some time. <laughs> it's definitely going to take some time. Um, okay, we're going to, I'm going to finish this area. <laughs> and then probably be done for this. So I'm gonna add some black. The fur is kind of coming down along the angle of the neck. Kind of wish his nose was showing because you don't get to do a cute little don't get to do a cute little bunny nose <laughs> I might do a tiny little bit of dark right under just like that that looks better So this, this is black, that is black, black. I'm gonna throw some. tapping it to blend it as opposed to, you know, smearing it. Um, 
it still doesn't look right. Like I don't have it long enough, or I don't have this. I don't have the shape. I don't have this shape right yet. Something's not not right. Um, so this is, well, that's right, but I think this came down too far. I think that's the problem, because that should be, yeah, yeah, I'd say, <laughs> um, yeah. So, I'm going to take. Some of it I have to remember is an illusion because this is so dark and this is not. Oh, sorry. Did you see any of that? <laughs> um, also, I will say that interestingly enough, when you, when I look at this with the camera, um, through the camera, the details show up so so much more um, than they do in person, um, which sometimes is a good thing, but sometimes it's a bad thing because like the naked eye doesn't see um, in person everything that the camera picks up. And so it... Um, it can be... It's deceiving. All right, so I'm doing some kind of triangle um, hairs, clumps. I'm doing clumps of hairs that I'm doing kind of with little triangles, little bees. Try and do that a bit in here. I'm wondering if I should switch to this ivory instead of the white. I think I think I should. So when I'm putting this black in, I'm coming from underneath. Something 
things just not. I really don't know what it is. I think it's the um, I think it's the dark. I think it's kind of an optical illusion. But we can always come back later and fix things. All right, I think that looks pretty good. That's where I'm at so far. I don't know how long it's been. An hour and a half? Two hours? I don't know. Um, but we're getting there. I think I'm pretty happy with that so far. So um, I will come back um, next time and we will keep going. All right. Until I see you guys again. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Happy arting. Happy coloring. <laughs> Bye.